ャッジボールバーミンファイヤーマイクロコンピューターを使ったゲームウォッチゲームをしないときはデジタル式コーツ時計ですゲームウォッチ Hello everybody and welcome Look what the mailman brought in The mailman brought me a game and watch with a color screen It has such a pretty box The,、um, the box itself doesn't have a lot of this stuff on it. It's actually the plastic on the outside that has most of this on it. As you can see, we got Bowser here shooting flames across and a、uh, little sort of summary of what it can do. But、uh, from what I've seen, it can do a hell of a lot more than just simply play a couple games. It's a very interesting system.、Uh, came out a little bit before I was born, actually. I was born in 1984. And、um, it's very neat. I'm going to go ahead and open it. It has some、uh, little sort of plastic here. So instead of ripping that off and potentially damaging the box, I'm just going to cut it. This way. I can slide the box off and hopefully maintain the aesthetic. As you can see, the screen itself, you see, and a lot of the,、um, the graphics are part of the sleeve, not the, the box. That's very interesting. Although the princess and toad. Are part of the, the box, which is kind of interesting. Alright. So we are greeted immediately with a standard Nintendo charging cable. Kind of looks similar to the ones that、um, came with the Nintendo Switch, but much smaller. Interesting. Nice little game and watch guide. Multiple languages, of course. I really love the,、uh, like、the game and watch logo. It's kind of cool. I must have spent some time on that, even back in 1983, making sure they got that right. Oh, it just kind of slides out. It's in a nice little protective sleeve. I doubt the battery is charged, but we can always see. No, that screen looks so shiny, doesn't it? The shiniest. What about beard? It's very small. It's like there's the charging port. Oh no. What is that then? This is the charging port over here. Oh, okay. So we got the time button. And we can set the time. Just the volume, screen brightness. Yeah, interesting. So we got Super Mario 1 and Super Mario 2, as well as the ball game. Now, to give everyone an idea of how big this is, I have the Nintendo Switch here. And、um, here is the Game and Watch. On top of the Nintendo Switch, a very small, or small.、Um, even the Joy Con itself, if you compare just the Joy Con, it's a little bit longer than a Joy Con that way, and it's not even as tall. With it very easily in your pocket, just to say the least.
All right, so now that we have the um, unit unboxed and um, we've got a good look at all the sides, I wanna show you guys some features, some very interesting things that you can do with it. So once you set the time, the background actually changes depending on whether it's day or night, which I think is really cool. Um, and if you press the game button while you're in the clock, it changes the background. Let's uh, change it to daytime so that we can get a better idea of what that looks like. So now we have our daytime clock. You got your mushroom background. Yeah, so that's pretty much your starting level. And then you got the, uh, was it like the grass tree area? It's pretty cool. Um, another thing that you can do is you can add enemies. Um, so if you hold the down button, or press the down button rather, um, you'll spawn enemies onto the map and you can get poor Mario killed. Um, another thing that you can do is um, if you hold down the A button while you're on the clock for five seconds, it brings up the Mario drawing song. And it's in multiple languages. Um, and you see if you, um, when you first go in there, you can change the uh, language. Um, I think there's a bug because though it doesn't, uh, doesn't actually make any sound on the other ones right now. Maybe there'll be some kind of update, I don't know. I'm not really sure how that will work. Um, but as you can see, we have multiple languages, including Japanese. Hmm. Oh, I heard there was a bug. Definitely seems to be working, though. All right, so um, some more things about this. There are some little Easter eggs in here um, when it gets to certain times. Um, it's really kind of impossible to go through all of them, but you'll, as you go through, you'll actually start to see them. Um, this little thing right here that you see going around the, the map is the seconds. Um, so it lets you know, you know, how far into the minute we are. Um, also I've noticed that, um, it does, uh, let me see here, like on the hour, it seems to do fireworks, if I remember correctly. We're just going to have to wait, aren't we? Try and get Mario killed while we're waiting. Oh, the little mole. I didn't see him before. The AI is actually kind of smart, too, because as you spawn the monsters in, uh, like the turtles and whatnot, the, um, he tries his best to avoid them and kill them. It's actually pretty cool. I mean, he doesn't always succeed, but uh, he seems a little smarter than just a character that's being ran straight across the screen. Maybe he has some basic inputs like, you know, jump if, um, etc. Hey, there's Yoshi's. So some, something special happens on the hour. I thought that was pretty cool. You see the little fireworks. Um, and you can spawn monsters um, after the, the special event. All right, so um, the three games that are on here are Super Mario Brothers, um, Super Mario Brothers 2, which is actually not the crazy one. It's actually the Lost Levels. Um, and, uh, and then we got the ball game. So let's do the ball game first. Um, the ball game is very simple. Um, but when you're in here, you can actually change to Luigi um, by holding down the A button. 
I think it's for five seconds. And Luigi's face is quite, uh, he's quite worried. Very worried indeed. Um, and then we have, of course, the Super Mario Brothers um, and the Lost Levels. Now, the really cool thing about Super Mario Brothers is um, they've added some little cheats in here for us. So if you hold down the A button, um, you'll actually unlock Infinite Lives. Um, and there's also a level select. So you see up here where it says 1-1? One, one? If you press the B button, it will change to 2-1, 3-1, etc. Now you have to actually get to that level before it will allow you to, um, to sort of you know skip ahead. Uh, but I think that's pretty cool. I also verified that you don't actually have to go to the level. Um, you just have to get past it. So first thing I did was I used the warp pipes in the second level to warp to war level four, uh, four you know four one. And as soon as I level warped it to level four one, it was giving me the ability to go to the ones in between, which I had not even touched. Um, so the infinite um, lives is holding down the uh, A button. Uh, for five seconds, that seems to be the trick to things in this game. Um, and you see now you have the little infinite lives symbol, which is pretty cool. Um, and the gameplay is actually very nice. Although playing it through the camera has quite a bit of input lag. <laughs> Alright, and then um, if you've never played Lost Levels, Lost Levels is the um, sort of second game um, that has a lot harder levels in it than the original. It, you could almost say that it's like the first Mario Maker uh, sort of scenario. Uh, it has the poison mushrooms in there and a bunch of other interesting things. Um, let's see if I can hop in there. Boom. Of course you can't go backwards. <laughs> Let's see, what else was there? Um, you know, in the original Mario, when you beat um, Super Mario Brothers 1, um, you know, you rescue the princess, you defeat Bowser, um, you, you know, you're in the last castle, um, you unlock a hard mode. Um, you can unlock the hard mode in this, and thankfully, you know, unlike the original Nintendo, where if you turned off the Nintendo, you lost hard mode, you won't lose hard mode once you unlock it on this. Um, I think that's pretty much everything involving the system itself. Um, I will say that it's a very nice, small little system, very easy to carry in your pocket. I can certainly understand why they have the watch in the Game & Watch, because it's like a little pocket watch. You know, keep it in your top pocket or your, I mean, uh, it could almost maybe fit in the, like, the, the smaller pocket that's always at the top of the jean pocket. Not sure. So I noticed that if you let um, him run for a while and you kind of pay attention to him, um, he doesn't always do the same things. In fact, um, at one point, he does the moonwalk. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this captured on camera. Oh, look, right there. As soon as I was talking, the little, little backwards walk. I'm sure there's all sorts of cute little things that he does. Um, only time will tell. I feel like this uh, little handheld is just full of Easter eggs. Uh, speaking of Easter eggs, um, as I was sitting here just watching the screen, um, a picture came up, um, I guess sort of like a screensaver. And um, I did a little digging and um, found out that each of the modes has their own pictures. And um, also, as you can see, I'm, I'm at 1133, which is uh, bedtime. And there was actually even a bedtime picture of Bowser. I'm going to show you all those right now. But you know what we're going to do next? We're going to take it apart. Because why not? I love taking things apart. So we've got our tools handy here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take out our tri-wings. 
So it has four tri wings on the back. Fairly simple construction. And there's our first screw. Now you always want to be careful with tri wing screws because they are um, very easy to, to strip if you're not careful. Um, especially if you don't exactly have the correct Y wing or tri, <laughs> tri wing screw. Y wing. I must be thinking about Star Wars. They did have some uh, cool Mandalorian episodes come out. Come on now. I haven't seen the new Mandalorian episodes. Nobody spoil it for me. Let me just go ahead and set this down on the table. It'll be easier. All right. All right we're going to get a good shot of the internals. Why not? It's always fun to take things apart. I know some people don't see the the reasoning in it, but you know, it's fun. It's fun to see how things work. It's fun to see how things tick, you know. So you get an idea of what's inside and how things are put together. So right off the bat, um, looks like we have some little pads here. I guess they're supposed to sort of cushion things. Um, I'm not quite sure what that's for, but I'm assuming it's so that you, if you press on the back, it doesn't, um, doesn't squeeze too hard. All right, so we have a rechargeable lithium ion battery, uh, model hack HAC-006. So that should be fairly easily replaceable. As you can see here, there's a um, an easily uh, pullable little clip connector there. Um, there's our main processor, I'm assuming. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. So, nice little writing there. Um, we have some writing on the board here, HXA main 01, of course, side B, because this is the opposite side. There's a little water damage sensor. Um, so, you know, if you get this thing wet, they're going to know. Um, the power button right here, looks like it slides right out. It's uh, got a little plastic spring system. I'll just leave that where it is. There's our USB-C. Um, if you're wondering if anyone has hacked this thing yet, yes, they have. Someone has already figured out how to hack this. Um, apparently, they used the debug port on the um, the processor itself. I'm going to have to look into that and see um, what kind of method they used, whether they used little probes or not. Um, and I'm going to have to keep track of that, too, because I would really like to see this with more games on it. Um, you know, why not add, like, Metroid on here or something fun like that? So the screws on the inside are Phillips. Um, so we're going to grab our Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to take these out real quick. I just want to see what's on the other side of this board. And uh, we're going to put it all back together and hopefully, you know, it'll still work. So let's go ahead and disconnect the battery for the moment. Um, and now that we've disconnected the battery, we're going to see if the watch keeps the um, time, as well as whether we lose our game settings. So that'll be some valuable insight that we come across from this. Now we do have two ribbon cables which are going around the front of the unit. Um, I'm not 100% sure we're going to have to disconnect those because um, it seems like the board actually should just sort of fold upward. Um, and then we'll get a look at whether the buttons are membranes or whether they are, you know, like Joy-Con style where they're little clicky metal bits. All right, so we've got all the screws out. Um, unfortunately, the speaker, if you can see here, 
is on very short wires and um, I don't necessarily think we're going to be able to move this. Oh, we missed one screw right there, right next to the battery terminal. All right, a lot of screws for a little tiny device. I'm assuming that uh, most of them are to prevent um, depression while you're pressing the buttons down because um, there's literally four right over top of the D-pad and then there's one, two, three right over top of the A and B buttons. So in general, I would definitely say that it's, it's probably to maintain stability while you're using it. There's also two screws right next to the USB-C port. It's nice to see USB-C ports and things. Um, I really have never liked the micro USB. I felt like they broke too easily and um, just weren't the greatest. So it doesn't look like, oh wait, no. All right, so the whole thing will fold up. All right, so now we have the model number of the screen. Let me get a good look at that. That's an Enolux. And as you can see there, DC4506B000KX000. I'll just leave that on the screen for a good little bit of time so that you guys can make sure that you get that. Just in case, you know, one of you guys has an accident, it breaks, you know, maybe you want to replace the screen. The screen might not be that expensive. Um, these two ribbon cables that I was talking about earlier, they definitely come from the screen. Um, let me give the screen a push. No, nope. so there's no screws holding down the screen and the screen is definitely in there well, so it's probably glued. And then we have our Our little membranes so it looks like they are membranes which is which is nice um, those little clicky ones I don't think they last anywhere near as long as the membranes do and here's the bottom of our d-pad so as you can see our d-pad has a little nub that sticks up ever so slightly above the the bottom that's good because that will probably prevent mispresses um, especially in the event of, you know, like up-down combos. So this definitely goes like this. Let's try to remember which one it was, uh, which post it was stuck to. So we're just going to fold this whole mechanism back down. It's really nothing on the back to see. All right, so we're going to put this back on top of the posts. It does the battery compartment does sort of flop around a little bit, um, but other than that, everything seems to be fairly immobile. Alright. So that's the speaker then right here. This little port over here that, that I wasn't quite sure exactly what that was. That's the, uh, the speaker exit. So there's only one, one spot that the speaker comes out, not two. Okay. Just trying to feel it around. It does seem to just sort of have a resting point. It doesn't kind of like click in or anything. So 
So we gotta put in each one of the screws again. Quite a large number of screws. Uh, maybe we can get a count on those as we're going. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten Phillips head. And then we had one. Oh, nope, nope, eleven Phillips head. Um, yeah, eleven. And then we had four tri wings on the outside. Not Y wings. We're not in. We're not in uh, Star Wars, guys. As much as we all would like to be in Star Wars, with little droids running around, cleaning up our messes. That would be cool, right, guys? And gals. Not sure how many tech head gals are out there, but uh, I hope you enjoy me taking apart this Game & Watch system. Might as well use the Game & Watch box as our, our little base. I really didn't expect that many screws on the inside of this thing. I'm going to tell you that much. But I'm actually rather glad because um, I have taken apart quite a few um, controllers in the past and they didn't have quite enough screws underneath of, for instance, the D-pad or the buttons. And uh, one good strong press down on the D-pad or the buttons and you could crack the post, like the single post that was holding the uh, whole thing together. And um, it definitely would break the controller. Let's put the two back into the USB-C port. Which seem to be doing more than just holding down the USB-C port. They um, they go into the the case. All right. battery terminal. Now always make sure that if you're taking some part guys um, and gals, disconnect the battery. Uh, if you disconnect the battery you'll be okay. You won't have to worry about the unit um, shorting out on anything and just in general it's gonna it's gonna save you from a bad day. Um, you know if for instance you drop your your screwdriver it happens to connect two crucial points um, it's nice not to uh, to have your device get shorted all right so we're gonna reconnect that battery and put our cover back on make sure we got the right sides all right let's turn it back on and see what happens so it did in fact reset our time. Um, let's do one more check here. I want to see if it reset our levels as well. So it did not reset our levels, but it did reset our time. Interesting. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Game & Watch um, that came out for the 35th anniversary of Mario. Um, it's a very interesting little device. Um, I'm not quite sure that it was worth what I paid for, but um, It'd be fun to carry it around, put a little Mario, you know, on my brakes at work and stuff. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.